Gal it says he will he will show up. <laughs> you reach coming in. <laughs> we were just saying you before you crazy person be on time well, every it's, time. We were just saying it's before you came. It's recording. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله القوي القادر المقتدر إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون وأشهد أن سيدنا وأولنا وسابقنا والشاهد علينا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبده ورسوله لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا من يطع الله ورسوله وأولي الأمر من المؤمنين فلا يضل أبدا ومن يعص الله ورسوله وأولي الأمر من المؤمنين فلا يهدى أبدا أما بعد Dear committed Muslims <coughs> The world that we are in, in in this time frame, is meant to have Muslims killing Muslims and Muslims killing those who are not Muslims and those who are not Muslims killing Muslims. As if there is some master plan somewhere and whoever is responsible for that master plan is lighting the matches of civil wars, civil strife and bloodshed here, there and almost everywhere Muslims are. One aspect of this is a very ugly one that is playing out, so to speak, in Syria. There are some fanatics, bigots, who are killing, these are, they, they call themselves Mujahideen, or killing innocent people. One chapter of that killing and mayhem is their assault in a deadly fashion against those who are of the Christian faith. And there is a, a chapter in the Quran that speaks about a chapter in history that almost no one is aware of. And that chapter is one of the short surahs in the last juz or volume, the 30th juz of the Quran, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قتل أصحاب الأخدود النار ذات الوقود 
إذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود وما نقموا منهم إلا أن يؤمنوا بالله العزيز الحميد الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء شهيد إن الذين فتنوا المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثم لم يتوبوا فلهم عذاب جهنم ولهم عذاب الحريق These آيات in سورة البروج are speaking to us about a society of committed Muslims because that's what mu'mineen means these committed Muslims these mu'mineen were living in an area called Najran to be honest to the whole subject there are three explanations, geographical explanations of where this massacre took place that is mentioned here in these ayat in the Quran. One of them says in Al-Habasha in Africa. The other one says in today's Levant, Bilad al-Sham. The other one says in Najran al-Yemen and yet another one says somewhere in Persia and after close consideration of these historical pinpointing of where this incident took place it appears the strongest evidence corroborates that this bloody incident took place in Najran. Najran is a geographical area that historically is part of Yemen. Arabia Felix. Though in the past century with the effects of colonialism this particular area was claimed and then attached to that artificial state called Saudi Arabia. In this area, in a time period between Isa alayhi salam and Muhammad alayhi salam, in the time period between them, there was a Christian community that was not like what you may call today's Christians who got befuddled and confused concerning the issue of Allah's wahdaniyyah. These were, in the words of the Qur'an, committed Muslims, mu'mineen. There's no shirk, there is no uh, kufr, none of these violations of iman. They were mu'mineen. And there was a ruler in that southwestern corner of the Arabian Peninsula in Yemen called Dhu Nuas. Dhu Nuas was a Yahudi ruler. And as I said, there, there was a Christian society that had developed there. They grew in numbers. And that was due to the effect of two persons. One of them was the teacher and the other one was the student. They were on the deen of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. And they were known for karamat. Karamat in Islamic terminology translates to miracles in the Judeo-Christian literature. 
So every time they would perform a karama, they would impress the people who were seeing this karama performed. And the people would become committed Muslims, committed Christians, following the deen of Isa. And so the ruler got disturbed by this. Many of his subjects now are becoming Christians, and he is a Yahudi. So what he did, he took these two persons who he considered to be subversives and radicals, he took them and killed them. And then he took and then he dug trenches, big holes, and he brought these committed Muslims to this place. And he gave them a choice. Either you renounce your faith, your commitment, you renounce it, and you can go free. If you don't, we're going to throw you into these pits. And they didn't. As the news is recorded, these people in their thousands did not accept to do that. So they were thrown into these pits, these ukhdud, akhadid. They were thrown into them. And then what happened was they were torched to death. They were lit on fire and killed in that ugly way. The, these ayat that were pronounced at the beginning of the khutbah, these ayat refer to this incident in which a Yahudi ruler came and killed innocent people. Now historians are at a difference to as how many people are we talking about. Some say the number is as low as 6,000. Others say the number is as high as 24,000. Now the world at that time is not the world today. At that time, today the world is around what? 7 billion people, between 6 and 7 billion. Obviously, and we're talking about maybe here 1,700 years ago, it, the world is much less population. So if we adjust for the difference in demographics, this was a holocaust committed by a Yehudi against, com, against committed Muslims. The ayat, once again, قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ The companions of the pits or the trenches were killed. That's one rendition of the meaning. The other rendition of this meaning is those people who were responsible for digging these trenches, these pits, the ayah is saying death to them. That would be the Yahudi ruler and his accomplices and functionaries. Qutila ashabul ukhdud. An nari thatil waqud. How are we describe how is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing this? An nari thatil waqud. A fire that is fueled, which means this wasn't a simple fire. This was a tremendous fire. إِذْ هُمْ عَلَيْهَا قُعُودِ In these pits, there were people who were put there to sit in it for this terrible thing to happen. وَهُمْ عَلَى مَا يَفْعَلُونَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ شُهُودِ And these people in power the Yahudi ruling class, they testify to what they did to the committed Muslims. They are watching what is happening to committed Muslims. Remember, these are people who are following Isa alayhi salam. 
قتل أصحاب الأخدود النار ذات الوقود إذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود وما نقموا منهم إلا أن يؤمنوا بالله العزيز الحميد the, These rulers, this Yehudi ruling class and king They took revenge against these people for what purpose? أن يؤمنوا بالله العزيز الحميد They are committed to Allah the Allah of glory and the Allah of thanks. الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض He who has the dominion of the heavens and the earth which belongs to Allah الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء شهيد Allah watches Allah is witness to all that is happening. Allah witnessed this, and if it wasn't for the Qur'an, this incident would be withdrawn from the human mind, from the human conscience. And here we are, here we are, as committed Muslims, reading these ayat in the Qur'an and realizing who in the world is responsible for crimes against humanity, for crimes against innocent people. If it wasn't for this Qur'an, the mainstream mind out there, the media, academia, where, where information is to be found, would not come across this piece of information. قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ النَّارِ ذَاتِ الْوَقُودِ إِذْ هُمْ عَلَيْهَا قُعُودِ وَهُمْ عَلَى مَا يَفْعَلُونَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ شُهُودِ وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ الَّذِي لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ لَهُمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقِ Those who cause this sedition vis-a-vis committed Muslims, men and women, and then after that don't express their regret and their guilt and their tawbah for that, they themselves shall suffer the burning fire which awaits these types of criminals past, present and future. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ادعوه سبحانه وأنتم على يقين بالإجابة وتوبوا إلى الله إن الله تواب رحيم الحمد لله الذي هدى وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه أولي النهى والتقى When these types in today's world in Syria and in other places when they are going after innocent people, whether they are Muslims, whether they are Christians, or whether they are something else, they have no basis, no foundations, no justification for what they are doing from Allah or from His Prophet. Because of the, because of the responsibility that we have towards innocent people in this world, I'm just going to, in this short second khutbah of this Jumu'ah, I'm going to read for you the agreement between Allah's Prophet and those who were followers of Isa ibn Maryam in Najran after a delegation went and visited him in al Medina. And remember, the Prophet of Allah never expelled any Christians from the Arabian Peninsula. To the contrary, we will listen here to the agreement that he had with them. Unlike Yahud and their history in al Medina, in Khaybar, and in the Arabian Peninsula. He says to them, Walinajran Wahashiyatiha and to Najran, that's the area that is predominantly Christian. And to Najran, Wahashiyatiha and its surroundings. Jiwarullah the company of Allah, the proximity of Allah, 
وذمة محمد النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام and the conscientious care of Muhammad the Prophet may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his they have this proximity of Allah and conscientious responsibility of the Prophet pertaining ala anfusihim pertaining to their lives and selves وَمِلَّتِهِمْ and pertaining to their community and society وَأَرْضِهِمْ and pertaining to their lands and property وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ and pertaining to their possessions and wealth وَغَائِبِهِمْ and pertaining to those of them who are absent from that territory وَشَاهِدِهِمْ and pertaining to those who are resident in that territory وَعِيرِهِمْ their livestock and means of transportation وَبُعُثِهِمْ in their missions وَأَمْثِلَتِهِمْ and even in their icons لَا يُفْتَنُ أُسْقُفٌ مِنْ أُسْقُفِيَتِهِ there shall not be a priest who will be seduced away from his priesthood. وَلَا رَاهِبٌ مِنْ رَهْبَانِيَتِهِ And not a monk who will be seduced away from his monastery. وَلَا وَاقِهٌ شَمَّاسٌ مِنْ وَقَاهِيَتِهِ And not a... Waqih is, uh, is an ancient word, is equivalent probably in the Christian hierarchy of religious clergymen to a bishop and a bishop is secure in his position <laughs> pertaining to whatever they are in control of whether it is a large amount or a large number or a smaller number this is like a guarantee from Allah's Prophet that once again, just like the ayat in Surah Al-Buruj, there is some type of mastermind behind the scenes that does not want us to honor this relationship and to be the champions of the oppressed, whether they were back there in that history or whether they are here in today. Compare this, Allah's ayat, and the word of His Prophet, to the delegation of Najran, compare that with the craziness that is happening in today's world, the fanaticism that is fueled by Saudi Arabia and those who are the masters of Saudi Arabia. Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqan warzuqna tiba'a wa arina al batila batilan warzuqna ijtinaba wa la taj'alhu multabisan alayna واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا لا تآخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وآل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل 
إن الله نعم ما يعظكم به إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة got to say but you really don't have to take off your shoes it's not mandatory to take off your shoes in conditions like this but if you 